I'm out here in this Martian-like landscape in search of a mysterious rose. Don't label me crazy. I know they're out there. Oh, there we go. A field of roses. You don't see them? Oh, these are desert roses. No, not those desert roses. These are roses made of stone. Here, I'll show you. A desert rose crystal. Now we have a problem. All right, guys, that's classic red bed. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Let's Go Geo. As always, I'll be your field guide, Heather, and today we are talking about this the desert rose crystal, also known as the Sahara rose, and the gypsum rose, and the sand rose, the selenite rose, the barite rose, or the rose rock. Now, technically this thing is not really a rock. The rose rock thing was kind of a mistake from early Oklahomans who needed a geology lesson. But anyway, it's not even technically a mineral. It actually can be made up of a lot of different minerals, a lot of evaporates, like gypsum and barite and anything. We'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> and it's technically not a crystal in itself. What it is, is actually a crystal habit. The rosette pattern is the way that those different minerals form their crystals in this radial pattern. You see, the crystals nucleate out from a point source, and they form in these plate-like or you could say petal-like structures that radiate out like a rose blossom. Hence, this place looks like a field of roses was magically turned to stone. There's another one. And indeed, these little roses have been surrounded by much magic and myth. Nowadays, crystal healers believe that desert roses can be capable of enhancing memory, psychic ability, and balance in life. Whatever that means. And back in the day, there was a myth circulating about the desert Cherokee's roses. Cherokee's tears and blood turned to stone, and that's where the desert roses came from. The Cherokee themselves have said, no, that was made up by merchants who wanted to sell these roses in Oklahoma. Eh. Well, they may or may not be magical. They're certainly pretty neat, and maybe even a little mysterious. The question is, is how do these rose rocks even get here? Desert roses tend to form in arid places that have a lot of source of sand and high evaporation rates, like a shallow salt base. And they form from the precipitation of evaporate minerals, mostly sulfates like gypsum, barite, and celestine. And fluctuating wet-dry cycles allow these minerals to precipitate and form these cool mineral structures that look like roses. Desert roses can be really small, like the size of a pea. Or they can be really big, like this one. And they can form as single rose blossoms or a whole cluster of Some roses. Some of the largest ones in Oklahoma can weigh over 100 to 1,000 pounds. But you can find desert roses all over the world as long as you have those conditions we talked about. For instance, today we're in Utah. And we're surrounded by the Morrison Formation, which provides us with all of those things. It's a source of sandstone and sand for our rose formation. And it's also a source of those minerals, those, those evaporate minerals like gypsum and barite that we talked about. It even has a little bit of iron, which allows these roses to get a bit of a reddish color to them. You can also find desert roses in places like the Atacama Desert and the Sahara Desert, where there's a salt lake and a high salt content and low iron impurities make them look more beautifully crystalline than, say, these rusty looking roses we have here. And in Australia, where barite sand roses form from red Permian sandstone. Also around Qatar. In fact, if you look at the National Museum of Qatar, it seems to have been inspired by roses. Now maybe these were regular roses, but they sure do look like roses made of stone. Similar to those Australian roses, the famous Oklahoma roses were also formed from Permian layers. Those would be over 250 million year old layers. And it consisted of a shallow sea where barite could precipitate in the shallow sea and form around quartz grains. Those reddish sandstone roses are part of what's called the Garber sandstone. Now, in Oklahoma, they became known as the Rose Rock, and it's actually the state rock of 
Oklahoma. Now here in the Morrison Formation, which was laid down back in the Jurassic, there's since been a lot of shifts in the land, seaway movements, and orogenic events. These events have been responsible for the movement of basinal fluids, which have caused a lot of mineralization and ore bodies to form. And it might have also been responsible for moving around those minerals that led to rose formation. So there you have it, guys. Desert roses. They're real. And you got to see them here today. And now you know where to find them, Hope too. Hope you enjoyed that episode. I'll see you guys next time when we talk about more minerals and rocks and everything awesome that is geology. Bye.